I, I like that specific question because it accords sort of an opportunity to demystify uh, what a green building is. Um, because I think um, sometimes when people think about a green building, they think of it as a very technical, um, like you have to have very sort of high tech interventions for a building to be considered a green building. Um, the truth of the matter from a design perspective, if you begin your design uh, in terms of if you're a building owner, if you're building your own home, if you're an architect, if you're a developer, if the design strategies you use in the beginning are focused on um, uh, being sensitive to the environment, then you already meet 60-70% of the threshold for that building to qualify as a green building. And by design strategies, I mean simple things. How do you orient your building to be able to get the most natural light, more natural light, means you use less artificial light. You're reducing your, your energy use in the building. How do you orient your building? Uh, we're in most African continent, uh, countries are in, the, are in the tropics. How do you orient your building to have the best natural ventilation? We don't typically need heating or, or air conditioning per se in most of our rooms. So how do you um, orient your building to get the most out of natural ventilation based on the various times of the year? So making these sort of very smart design strategies right from the start which always starts off with working with a professional who can actually guide you on that, it means that you start meeting that threshold of a, of a building that is considered a green building. Um, besides that, uh, when you look at a green building, we look at a couple of different things when it comes to what we call certification. We look at materials, which you mentioned. Uh, what materials are you using? Are those materials considered uh, what we call low impact? By low impact, we mean from the point of the material being manufactured to the point the material is installed and, and on site, what is the use, what is, what, is, what is the impact of that material in terms of carbon emissions, in terms of energy used? So, and, and it's actually called the embodied carbon for the materials. We look at the materials, are the materials low impact? And that means, did I use the earth that, that I excavated from my site to um, create rammed blocks? That would be a very low impact material. Um, besides material use, we also look at energy efficiency. I mentioned that a little bit, but really around energy efficiency is how do we ensure that the energy we use in the building is used optimally. We ensure that we do not use energy unnecessarily and we save and store where we can. And that comes to even simple things like having um, solar panels in your buildings to store some energy to be able to sort of, um, uh, and, and solar energy doesn't have to be used throughout the building. You could still be on the grid, but still use some of the solar energy, which means then, then you are sort of um, uh, impacting in terms of the energy use. Um, then we also use, look at water efficiency. Um, so we, materials, energy efficiency, then we look at water efficiency. With water efficiency, very simple. Harvest rainwater at any opportunity. Any building has rainwater gutters and downpipes. It takes sort of a little bit extra to go the additional step to say that we're going to harvest this rainwater and store it for use. Recycle the water in the building. And that's as simple as what is coming out of your taps. Take it into a biodigester, reticulate that water and have it go back into the building again. Um, so we really look at materials, low impact. We looked at energy efficiency and we look at water efficiency. And that's what we consider a green building.